Zur on behalf of my co-investigators to present these data. Uh, very briefly, this was a large randomized phase three trial in patients with resected stage 3B, 3C, and 4 melanoma, who we would consider to be at very high risk of relapse, which means people who have at least a 50 percent risk of relapse at five years, and generally at least a 50 percent risk of death at 10 years. And this was a straight one-to-one -one randomization. Originally, it was planned to have at least 800 patients. At the end of the day, we randomized a little over 900 patients. And they were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to receive either ipilimumab, which in the U.S. at that time is and was a standard therapy, although not approved in the EU or elsewhere, given for one year at a standard dose of 10 milligrams per kilogram every three weeks four times, followed by maintenance ipilimumab every 12 weeks. That's the FDA-approved regimen. Versus nivolumab, which was the experimental arm, which was given at three milligrams per kilogram every other week with appropriate placebo-matched controls, so it was a double-blinded study. Duration for one year, and then patients would be followed up for four years, and the pre-planned stratifications were by stage, so three versus four, and by PDL1 staining. The primary endpoint of the trial was relapse-free survival. This study was stopped at a planned interim analysis, which is always a good thing. When you have a study that's stopped, usually that means the results are quite positive. And indeed, as you see here, the results were quite positive. There was a clear clinically significant and statistically significant benefit for the nivolumab arm compared to the ipilimumab arm. The p-value was very favorable at 0 0.0001, and the hazard ratio was 0.65 which, as you all know, means there was a 35 percent reduction in the risk of relapse over time. And again, the follow-up for all patients was a minimum of 18 months. It was a relatively brief follow-up, but again, this was a study that was stopped early at an interim analysis. If we look at the toxicity, again, highly favorable in favor of the nivolumab arm compared to the ipilimumab arm, <laughs> We're looking at, in terms of all treatment-related adverse events, 14 percent versus more than 40 percent. And in terms of patients who had to stop because of adverse events, which to me as a clinician is really the most important practical issue when administering an adjuvant therapy, it was 5 percent or so for the nivolumab arm, and it was more than 30 percent for the arm that received ipilimumab. So by any indication, Clearly, there was superiority for nivolumab compared to the active ipilimumab arm. And ipilimumab, of course, is an active regimen which prolongs both relapse-free and overall survival compared to placebo in a prior EORTC study. So when we think about the conclusions, nivolumab clearly showed a very clinically and statistically significant improvement in relapse-free survival versus high-dose ipilimumab for patients with surgically resected stages 3B, 3C, and 4 melanoma. I told you the hazard ratio was 0 0.65. The p-value was a very robust 0 0.0001. And if you look at the 18-month relapse-free survival rates, we're talking about 66 percent for nivolumab versus 13, or pardon, 53 percent for ipilimumab a 13 percent difference. Interestingly, over time, that difference opens up. At one year, it was about 10 percent, and then as we got to 18 months, it was 13 percent. So it was opening up that curve. And the benefit for nivolumab was observed for virtually all of the pre-specified subgroups, whether you look at stage, PD-L1 staining, um, BRAF mutational status, age, uh, ulceration of the primary, et cetera. And again, nivolumab had a superior safety profile in comparison to ipilimumab. There were fewer grade three, four adverse events, and there were fewer adverse events of any kind that led to treatment discontinuation. And in my opinion, I think nivolumab provides a very acceptable benefit risk ratio as adjuvant therapy for a high risk resected melanoma, and I think has the potential to be an effective treatment option for patients with resected stage 3 and 4 disease, of which in the U.S. we have quite a few. There are at least 20 or so thousand that fit that category. And again, our feeling is that if high-risk patients receive nivolumab after resection, those patients may have significant benefit. 
And interestingly, it may change the biology of melanoma because if most patients who ultimately relapse or who have high-risk disease receive a PD-1 antibody, a number of interesting questions arise about have we impacted the biology of the disease? And then, of course, questions arise, many interesting questions about how do you treat those patients once they relapse? Again, there will be longer follow-up needed to determine if there is an overall survival benefit, although this will be complicated by the fact that there will be a de facto crossover, because in all of the countries in which we did this study, both ipilimumab and nivolumab were approved for metastatic therapy. So if someone who got the ipilimumab arm relapsed, they would be able to receive nivolumab. If someone who got nivolumab relapsed, they could get ipilimumab. So there would, of course, be this inherent or de facto crossover, which will complicate survival. The other thing is, as you may know, the AJCC staging system changes, and practice sometimes changes. So that may complicate interpretation, but I think it's very clear that we have a very nice and beneficial regimen in the nivolumab adjuvant therapy. Thank you.